Hello everyone. This video will talk you through London Docklands, which is an example of an urban regeneration project. With this example, we'll consider why the regeneration was needed at London Docklands, as well as the main features of the project. You would use this example in the urban issues section of paper two, and it's one that you should know really well. So if we start then by considering why this was needed, if we zoom in on this before picture here, we can see that London Docklands was a dockyard used to house for shipping and home to those shipping containers, so for bringing goods in and out of London. Now, there were two problems here that meant the docks sort of went into a decline. So by the 1970s, okay, the dock area here was in decline. There were new container ships and they weren't able to fit into the small docks. So this especially happened at a place called Isle of Dogs. Okay. Now, the Isle of Dogs is at a point on the River Thames where it's very, very shallow. So the new huge large container ships couldn't fit then up the River Thames. They couldn't access this area anymore, which therefore meant no ships were docking there. The amount of containers and goods in this area decreased. Okay, so that was one of the reasons that contributed to things like loss of jobs, etc. in the area. So the area is starting to go into decline. And the second thing that contributed here is something called containerization. Okay. Now containerization okay, is the idea that now we have goods that are shipped on these boats with all of these big containers. They're stored inside those big metal boxes that get lifted by the cranes from the ships. Okay. Previously, what would happen is the goods would just be loaded onto the ship and then people were used to cart the goods off of the boats. So because of this and the new use of machinery to lose these, move these things, jobs were lost. Okay. In particular then, 83,000 jobs. Okay, and that was between 1961 and 1971. So these negatives here had a knock-on effect. Okay, they caused what we would call the spiral of decline. Okay, so the spiral of decline means that, well, once one negative happens, it causes something else that's negative to happen as well. Okay, a bit like if you knock a domino over, it hits another one and the whole row of them goes down. That's a bit similar then to thinking about the spiral of decline. So because the docks are in decline, because of a containerization, then certain areas near the docks, like Tower Hamlets, saw loads of knock on impacts. OK, and one of the big impacts that they saw there then was a drop in the population. OK. When we say a drop in the population, that means people moving out of the area. So in Tower Hamlets, this was about 18%. Alongside that, the housing in the Docklands area then was what we class as council-owned terrace housing and flats. So there was no commercial infrastructure. So there were no things like banks or building societies or offices. So quality of life okay, declined as well. So you normally have a good quality of life if you have access to things like parks and you can go to the shops and you can go and buy food etc. So that was what the situation was like before. We now want to think about well what's being done to improve this? What did they do? So an important year for us to know about is 1981. Okay, and in 1981, the Conservative government set up something called the LDDC. Okay, now LDDC stands for London Docklands Development Corporation. And the whole idea of bringing together this group of people then was to regenerate the area, to improve it, to stop it being this rundown area in central London and to do something with the space, okay? Now this was gonna come at a price. And the price then for this regeneration here was 
billion pounds. Now, 3.9 billion here came from the public sector. Okay. However, 8.7 billion here came from the private. Okay, so big companies and organisations investing in the area. So quite an expensive project, okay? But it had loads of impacts, and that's what we'll talk through in a second then. So the first thing we want to have a little think about was what was the impact then on the environment, okay? What good things can we see here? So if we think about the environment then, and looking at this picture, this looks much more pleasant, doesn't it? The after picture than the before picture. They increase things like open spaces. Okay. So when I say open spaces, like parks and places you can go walking, and in particular, 150 hectares of it. So quite a lot of space here. They brought in an ecology park. So space for wildlife to make the area more attractive. With that ecology park, they planted 200,000 trees to make the area sort of attractive and appealing. And with that then, new cycle routes and bridges as well. Okay. So that's all great for the environment. It's already a huge change in our before and after pictures here. Well, what about for the economy then? Well, I can see in this picture here, in the after picture, I've got more office buildings, quite a lot of high rise buildings, whereas I didn't have that in the before picture. So more people came back to the area. So unemployment fell. Okay. So unemployment here used to be at 14%. It halved, okay, it went to 7%. So that's great. We had 2,700 businesses. Well, that's great for bringing people back into the area for working. We've got Canary Wharf. It's a home to lots of TV studios and newspapers. We've got the Docklands Light Railway. Now that was built in 1987 and that carries 35,000 people a week. So all spending money on a ticket, all travelling into London to go and work. So that's great. We've got more people in that area working, we've got more investment, we've got more money. So that must mean then that we've got some great impacts for people as well. Okay, so let's have a little think about well, what the benefits are for people here. So... They built 22,000 new homes. Okay, so that's great. We know the area before didn't really have much accommodation. So now it's got 22,000 new homes. It's got a brand new shopping parade. They've spent as well 10 million on council accommodation. So improving what was already there. Okay. Now, that's really good, isn't it? Okay, because that's going to improve here quality of life as well. Okay, for those people. So in theory, everyone here should be a bit happier. And the last thing here to note then as well is that they spent about 100 million okay, on things like education. That's great. People with a better education can access better jobs on healthcare. People should have a better quality of life. They should be comfortable. Job training. So all things that should give people a positive boost. Okay. So those are like the key successes and the things that rose out of this as the benefits. We want to just consider, don't we? Are there any drawbacks to this? Okay, and that's something to think about in your revision. So out of all of these positives... Are there any people that are affected or maybe aren't better off than others because of this? What happened to the original people that live there? Can they afford these new house prices? But then you might argue, well, they now have access to all of these things that they didn't have before. OK, 
okay? So weigh that up as part of your revision because that's what you'll be asked to do in the nine mark questions. But I hope this video has been helpful at giving you a starting point with your revision about London Docklands.